I want to put some strings on my ukulele. I've been doing some maintenance. If you've seen parts one, two, and three, this is my very first ukulele. We've given it a really good clean. Uh, we've got rid of any sharp frets. We've put conditioner on the fretboard, but look, there's something obviously missing, the strings, all right? Um, it's not the greatest ukulele in the world. I don't think putting new strings on it is gonna make it fantastic but it's got to be better than the ones that were on there. So that's what we'll do today. Right, so when you go to change the strings on a ukulele, um, you get a couple of different types of fittings on your uke. So first of all, the bridge on this one, it's a slotted bridge. In other words, I'm going to tie a knot and it's going to fit into that little hole and slot on the end. Okay, you get pin bridges and you get ones where you've got to tie loops and things as well. But this is a slotted bridge um, and these are what I'd call normal tuners, right? You also get slotted headstocks as well. A little while ago, I bought some strings to do uh, this job and I bought some Ernie Ball ukulele strings and they come with easy install ball, a little bead on the end of the strings. Um, now, when I unpack them, to have a little look, um, this is what I discovered. There we go, this is what I mean. So it's black string, and then on the very end, you get that little bead, okay? And that then, in theory, slots like so into your ukulele bridge. However, what I discovered very quickly was that that ball end or the bead doesn't fit into the hole here so <clears throat> i could solve that easily enough i cut the bead off and tie the knot like you're supposed to do but it sort of defeats the object of these strings so <clears throat> what i thought i'd do plus as well um, this had black nylon strings on it and it'd be nice for it to look a little bit different. So rather than using the strings that I've bought to put on here, I'll keep these for another day. Maybe I'll find a uke with a slotted bridge where these actually fit. And I bought um, a set of Fender ukulele strings. They're not the most expensive strings and they're certainly not even my favourite strings, but this isn't the most expensive uke. I don't think, it doesn't matter what strings I put on it, it's never gonna be great. So we'll have a little look at fitting the fender strings on this ukulele. A little tip as well is when you are putting ukulele strings away, put them back in the correct packets so you know which string it is. I've spent way too long of my life trying to work out is that the thickest string, the thinnest string, store them properly. This could make for an interesting video. Sometimes you've got to put strings on and bum bum bum, it's done. Sometimes things go horribly wrong, okay? So I'm warning you now. Right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is get the strings out of the packet. Okay, pop those over there for a moment. Um, now, <clears throat> these are actually clear strings and that's another reason why I thought it would be nice just for a bit of a change. I've got my bits and pieces here that I think I'm going to need. So I've got my string winder, um, I've got my electric tuner, which is going to make it a lot easier to wind it up. And I always keep my little octopus uh, tool handy, just in case I need to tighten up anything to do with the pegs, okay? So I think we're all set. Um, so, first of all, let's get the strings out of the packet. Okay, be careful if you are cutting them like me, you don't cut the actual string. There we go. Okay, so what have we got? You've got strings with labels on, all right? The labels are there for a reason. Don't rip them off until you know exactly what you're doing. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And I'm guessing that one is gonna be our A string, two is going to be our E string, uh, three is going to be our C string, and four is going to be our G string, all right? Sometimes, depending on the maker's strings, um, A and G can often be um, exactly the same, all right, in terms of size. 
it doesn't say anything particularly different on here so yeah in fact if I come really close in there hopefully you can see that there it's given me um, the size of the strings all right and it's actually saying 0.28 for both the G and the A string all right <clears throat> handy to know so that if you go to change just one string and you think oh I've run out of an A string you could put a G string on if it's the same size right so I've got my strings ready I'm gonna start with the G string so that's the fourth all right the very first thing I'm gonna do is and notice now I'm just using one at a time all right so in fact I'm gonna put one two and three out of the way but they've still got their labels on uh, just in case things go wrong so I'm gonna unwind the string like so and the very first job I want to do is I want to slot this um, into here but I've got to put a knot in it all right now you've got absolutely plenty of string length to play with at the minute so the way I tend to do this is I'll make a knot so hopefully you'll see that I'm gonna double knot it straight away so I'm gonna do one tie like so and then do another tie straight away okay so when I got to pull it tight now all right you can see it's quite a nice big knot in there all right there we go so now if you want to be just extra careful uh, I'm just looking to see where I've put my little pliers a minute bear with me you are I've got my pliers now you've got to be careful because you don't want to damage the string if you if you can't pull it tight enough you can very very carefully pull it like so just so you can really pull that knot nice and tight okay and then you're just going to slot the string under there like so and pull it really hard now sometimes like I'm doing at the minute I'm actually there we go giving it a really really good pull under there now and I will snip that extra bit off at the end just in case something goes wrong all right so there we are that is our string into the slotted bridge with there and I'm pulling it really quite nice and tight okay so I've got that in for a minute I just want to check I've got plenty of string length so I'm happy with that now so what I'm going to do before we do the top peg bit I'm just going to snip off that excess that knot isn't going anywhere now okay so very very carefully snip that like so all right put it back where you've just got it from under there and pull it nice and tight okay so we are now going to go up to the tuning peg area so I'm going to actually just pause the video for a minute so we can zoom in a bit right so I've removed the label off the end of the string my knot is still uh, nice and secure in the bottom of the bridge now you've got to remember which way to put your string through all right because of the way you're turning it so it's going to go up and then I'm just going to slot it back through now ukulele string so all I'm doing at the minute is popping that back through the peg and pulling it all right let's hopefully get it so I don't knot it around hang on there we go okay now then there's an awful lot of string left here at the minute all right so I don't need all of that so I, I'm, I'm gonna we need to have tension on here so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut a lot of this string off here now not all of it I can snip it again later all right so I'm just going to give myself a good little bit of winding tension with there I'm going to cut the string with plenty left to wind on it all right like so and then my beautiful Jaume smart tuner turn that on I want to tune up so I'm actually 
gonna swap hands. I wanna try and keep this as straight as possible. So here we go. This is where things go wrong. Okay. So we can start to see now the string, Ooh, there we are, is pulling around the peg. Let me just, right, okay, that's all right. There we are, that's going on nice and straight. I'm not gonna do all the way up with uh, this for tuna for now because I don't want to snap it. So, all right, I'm just gonna leave it like that for a minute. Um, and then we'll do a better tune shortly. Right, so I've put the smart tuner down for a minute. I'm actually gonna go by hand because the last thing I wanna do is snap a new string. All right, I'm just gonna grab, in fact, I'm not even gonna grab the tuner. Just to give a rough idea, it's going to go out of tune. There's an awful lot of stretch in here, but you can see now there's about that much string left over, which I will snip a little bit later. Okay, but the process of going from, there we are, you can see my knot in there, going up to the tuning peg. I've got a little bit of slack, and that took just a couple of minutes. All right, so we shall now do the other three strings. Right, so I've just tied uh, my knot for my C string. Um, because it's a thicker string, I'm just gonna tie the one. Okay, so we'll slot that now into the bridge to start with, um, and then attach to the tuning peg. So here we go. All right, so I'm being quite firm. Right, there isn't a huge amount of room. In fact, this string looks a bit thicker and gauge than the other one, so I'm having to really be quite forceful. In fact, what I'm going to do right now, before I do any more, is take it out and cut that end bit off, because otherwise I don't think I'll be able to get in there with the scissors. So I'm just going to give it one last little tug to make sure that it's tight enough, okay? There we go, that's really nice and tight. Snip off the excess, like so. And keep everything crossed. Okay, so I'm just gonna slot that in there. There's not a lot of room, but it's in, okay? And then we'll do the same as before. All right, I'm gonna cut off some of this slack. In fact, the first thing I can do is remove that label okay so like the other string just check in yeah that's still down in the slotted bridge i'm going to pull it and give myself a little bit of slack uh, to be able to turn it up okay so i would have thought that's probably enough all right so i'm going to do exactly like i did before where's my tuna Turn that on. I made it sure I've got the string going the right way. I'm making sure that it is out of the way of the other peg. And let's see what happens. We're going up. Now, so I'm just getting it to a point where it's on. There we go. That will be a bit neater now when it goes on. Okay, I'm just holding it nice and tight over the nut and I'm keeping an eye to make sure that it's going on the peg nice and straight. All right, you can see the actual tension now coming through from the main bit of string. I'm gonna stop before it goes too tight because the last thing I wanna do is snap it. A little bit more. Okay. So there we are, that's the C string done. I'll snip that off shortly. So there we go, I'm just gonna snip off some of the excess for now, I'll do it again later for my C string. And we'll move on to the E string. So, number two, 
exactly the same process again looking down the bottom there's probably enough room for a double knot on this one so there we are all right do it once do it twice you can always undo one of them if it doesn't fit all right so i'm just pulling that nice and tight give it one little last pull with my pliers but again again being very careful not to go too hard let's see how this one fits yeah in fact this one's the same as a c-string i'm actually going to undo one of the knots on here there is no need for it So uh, I'm down to um, a single knot because it wouldn't fit a double knot. So I'm just going to tighten it up once more and try again. Okay, so there's my single knot. Pop it in to make sure it all fits. Yes, it fits much better this time. So I'll just snip off the excess right now. I'm just going to give it one more tighten. There we go. So snip the excess off. Pop it in the bottom. Now, if you really, if you make a mistake at this point, it's not the end of the world because you've seen I'm cutting off a fair bit at the other end. So if you do end up having to tie another knot, I'm just helping that and get in there a little bit. Right. So my E string, my uh, end is all nice and tight down the bridge. This again, it's like uh, the G string. It's very long. So I'm actually straight away going to cut off quite a bit of this because otherwise you end up with just too much string going round uh, the string post. All right, so I'll pop it through the once like so. All right, now. I, I need a bit of slack in here. I need some of it to go around the post. So we go like that. Give ourselves uh, a little bit of wiggle room. The more you change strings, the easier it becomes, honestly. There we are. So I know now I've got a fair bit of tension left there. I'm just going to get rid of this excess and start to tighten up all right keep an eye on what's going on down this end because i can see now that knot has just popped out a little bit so i'm just going to make sure it's in nice and tight before i start to wind the string round okay here we go Okay, let's have a little look. Okay, you can go a little bit more before I need to stop before I can break it. Okay, so that's the first three strings done. Our last string to put on is our A string, which is labelled first. Okay, now um, like the G-string, it is very long, so I know I'm going to have to cut this, but I'm just going to uh, be double safe and do a double knot in this one because the gauge of it is so much thinner. So there's my first knot. Hang on, turn that round. First knot. Second knot. All right, so I'm just twisting it in on itself again. Okay, there we go. So there's my new knot. Give it a little tighten with my pliers. I'm always careful not to cut if I can help it. It does happen. You do pull it too tight sometimes. All right, so that's pulled nice and taut. Let's check it fits. going to fit 
somehow. So it was always going to happen, something was going to go wrong. All right, I've done the double knot, but it will not fit properly in there. Now, because this is one of the longer strings, all right, I'm just going to simply snip that one off, do a single knot this time, and keep absolutely everything crossed that it doesn't slip, because we probably won't get away with cutting it again. So I'm just doing a single knot now. And we'll see how we go. All right, so there's my single knot. Keep everything crossed, it fits and holds. And it certainly fits. We seem to have enough up there. So I'm just going to snip off the excess down here now. Pop it through, hopefully, for the last time. Yeah. Right, trouble is doing jobs like this your hands get sweaty which really doesn't make it easy all right so i can take off my last label because i know this has got to be the right one because the other strings are already on there all right so we just pop that through once and cut the excess off again So I've done last double check. That knot is now in there, nice and neatly. Make sure it's in the nut. All right, give yourself some slack to start with. All right, so that'll probably do it. Let's try our double knot again. Okay, so we're just. Popping that through one more time. There we go. And we can now, hopefully, tighten up again. Remember, always keeping an eye on this knot down the other end, because the last thing you want it to do is come flying out as you're tightening it up. So, here we go. These tuners are great if you've got a lot of ukuleles to tune and if you're doing jobs like this. All right, it is possible that I have got a little hand tuner. So I could do it that way. All right, if I wanted to. Oh, hang on, it's going the wrong way now. All right, so it, you can do it like that, the good old fashioned method. It's an awful lot tuning it all by hand, all right, but these devices. Okay, so there we go, four strings. We're in a bit of a mess. We'll tidy that up in a moment and try and get a little bit closer to tuning, but it certainly looks different with the uh, clear nylon. I've got sweaty fingers all over my nice clean ukulele now, but there we are, you can see the knots in the bottom and the strings on the top. Okay, so the last little job is just to tidy up all these little bits. Now, the uh, A string that I've just put on is still by far the longest. Get rid of the bits of rubbish. So I'm just going to snip that one down for a minute. Now, I do tend to leave them like this at least for a few hours till the strings have started to settle down a bit. They go out of tune a lot. All right. When you first put new strings on, I'm going to be tuning this one now for a good few days. <laughs> Um, let's just see how close we are to it at the minute. So, Ooh, let me turn that one off because it goes a bit nuts otherwise. Right, I'm not using this for fine tuning on new strings. They go slack so, so quickly. So, guys can see it.
Now, quite often, I will leave them a little bit sharp to start with because they're going to stretch down anyway. But there we are. An out of tune, but with new strings ukulele. I can't leave it like that. We've got about three seconds till it goes out of tune. It's already gone. Okay, so my Ibanez ukulele. Um, new strings on it um, and it looks different because I've gone from black nylons. I'm not going to pretend this is not going to become the best ukulele in the world um, but maybe I'll play it a little bit more now. It's a bit cleaner, it doesn't have horrible sharp frets, um, certainly smells a bit better and the new strings are on there. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of confidence um, to change your own strings. What's the worst that's going to happen is you might snap some strings and believe you me I have snapped many ukulele strings. Okay, so as always, if you've got a comment or a question, drop it below, give us a like. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe um, so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.